this is what we got to do. So, uh, who was the parent that asked me about the broken wrist? He's got a kid. Actually, I think it was the same guy. He's gone. <laughs> Never mind. So we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do now? We're gonna do the volley and the serve return in a little while. But right now, we're gonna do troubleshooting. And this is where we as coaches, this is where we earn our money. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna let Hamid and Luke come in in a little while. So I've just reminded them of that. But I'm gonna do. Um, actually, Hamid, can you write this down as I go through it? I'm gonna go through the broken wrist. It is every coach's bloody nightmare. And once in a while, if you're very, very lucky, you'll have someone that has a broken wrist, and you'll say, no, don't do it like this. Don't do it like that. Do it like this. And they'll get it first time. If that happens, go to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> the broken wrist, which is most common, comes <coughs> back. And now, Joyce, sorry, darling, I love you. Joyce sometimes hits a forehand and does this. Okay. So when we get a little bit of spaghetti here, we lose a bit of control, we lose some spring time, and we actually stop the forearm doing its beautiful thing, rotating through the shot to deliver maximum power. It doesn't happen too much on the forehand, and it's very, very correctable. I know what I'm going to say about Terry. Remember, this is to do with what I'm talking about. Remember I said, if I'm coaching a kid and I see this follow through, it drives me nuts. When he was hitting his forehand drives, even when he demonstrated, he let his wrist extend and the racket, even at the highest point, didn't come above about there. Okay? So when we see the broken wrist and then hyperextended, some of you see it, actually see it, we can see it too long, or we can see it as you're coaching over the back side, you can see it over their left shoulder. And sometimes when you can't see the wrist, the racket head gives it away. So the racket shape, so when they do the wrap around, okay, when they give themselves a little hug, <laughs> then we know the wrap, and I can't see the wrist, but I know where the racket is. So the backhand is the one we're addressing right now. So this is the broken wrist on the backhand, and you all know it, and it's just horrible. Okay? It just doesn't generate racket head speed and it doesn't control the ball. People with a broken wrist, they learn to generate racket head speed by really epoing the body. We see the big woo. We see the big seesaw swing. Sometimes with the broken wrist, we get the, the helicopter follow through. Okay? Loved by the uh, North American Dental Association. <laughs> and this, of course, is a very dangerous swing and must be coached out. But remember that the player is doing all this to generate rack and head speed. That's the only thing that they are concerned about. And it upsets them that they can't. How many of you here, when your opponent hits a hard drive from here, and you don't like that, so you feed one up, feed, and then whatever tennis you hit it back. You can't deal with it. Usually when a player can't deal with a hard drive, it's to do with our wrist. So, how do we correct it? <clears throat> First off, people with broken wrists, not always, but more often than not, more often than not, that means only 50.1%, but it's more like 80, will have this grip here. If you need the player to change the grip, this is the toughest thing to change. The little muscles in the hand have their own memory and they're going to rebel, 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 rebel. So I tell my kids, and remember, you can only <coughs> teach this if they're hooked on squash. If they're not hooked on squash, forget it. If you're hooked on squash, hold the racket in an eastern position when you're, when you're on the way to the courts and when you're on your way home. Okay? Don't do hand signal. Uh, when you're watching a movie. And the more hours that you hold this racket, you are educating the little muscles in the hand, and they go, oh, I got it. But if you change that grip, or any grip, during the lesson, after you show them that, after two shots, it's gone back. And then you go, no, 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 grip, grip, grip. Okay, grip, grip, grip. No, 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 grip. And you just become this boring, boring bugger, and you're driving them crazy. So first one is, and this is a question mark, grip adjustment. Second one is figure eight, 
without the ball. So just watch. Forehand cross ball, backhand cross ball. Forehand cross ball, backhand. It's a figure eight on its side, and a broken wrist person does it like this. Keep the racket just above the floor. When they're good, they can do it as if they're on the ball. But when we come to here, the broken wrist has knuckles towards the floor. So you might say knuckles to ceiling. So number one is grip adjustment. Number two is figure eight. Number three, for me, it are shadow swings. So you take a, take a glass here, and it might be a full swing, it might not, and I just start doing shadow swings. If the wrist is really bad and they can't feel anything, have them with the knuckles to the ceiling, tap the ball. When they do this on the backhand side, the little muscles in the hand will ache. And it's the first time that they've been used to tap the ball on the backhand. If the hand goes too high when they tap, the wrist will break. The hand must stay low. <coughs> you got a racket? Uh, yeah. I'll borrow you. So we've got grip question mark, we've got figure eights, we've got shadow swings, we've got tapping if we need to. So now, I'm going to coach Hamid as if he's got a broken wrist. Um, and we'll, uh, so, uh, so let's have you face me. So, so I want to give you lots of time, so we're just going to go tap, tap. So I'm going to tap, lead, tap back. And what I'm going to have him do is I want him to be aware of knuckles to ceiling, and if he wants, he can just tap his wrist on the wrist on the back of the hand. There. And he's just going to tap. Now when he does this, if you can hear that ball, he's slicing. And that is a very frustrating thing that the player must go through. Okay? If he gets better, I can move down the court. Remember, this would not, this next bit would not be for a beginner. So now, I be there. I can have a good look at this swing. Okay? Thank you. So I've got um, figure eights, shadow swings, feet tap, feet tap. Now, he, I'll be <coughs> sure, I can feet tap, so he could, I could get the player to do this. There. Now the focus, the forehand is to set it up. Knuckles to see it. The player might do this. They've got to feel the knuckles to the ceiling. When they first start learning how to rotate the forearm, remember, and you cannot talk to a forearm muscle. Big muscles are stupid. They are obedient, but they are stupid. You guys, you have played with golfers here. You ever gone for a golf lesson? And the golf instructor has tried to get you to use your hips more. Huh? <clears throat> and you start talking to the different part of your body and you forget what the heck's done on the top of it. They're just stupid, these big muscles, but they are obedient. So as the player goes through this, learning how to do this, we <coughs> actually get this shot here. Listen to the sound of the ball. It's a slice. So the wrist has now been corrected and the forearm hasn't woken up. And you know what? You never know when it's going to wake up. But it will wake up. And it will wake up like that. It's very, very strange. It's not incremental. It will just suddenly start to rotate and the ball will sound better. The shadow swings will help this happen. Because on a shadow swing, if I teach a kid to go, now I'm bundling here. I'm going to bundle. <coughs> if I teach a kid to go from this shape to this shape, my forearm rotating. So if I just get them to do that, forearms rotating naturally, I go back to the ball, ba bom ba bom ba bom Right, last little thing before we take questions on this. This is the toughest thing to teach. The kid must be hooked. Remember that. Number one. Number two, you tell the player you're really keen on squash. I can feel that coming out of you. You want to hit the ball probably. So this kid, Christian, that we're working with now, who's at, what's his ranking? He's actually got a pretty good ranking. <coughs> Top 50 somewhere. And he, boy, does he want to play. He just, he wants to get. So I had him come down, watch all our players, and then he came down for a match. And there might have even been four teams here. I said, go to every court. He's 14. Show me the player with the broken wrist. And that was a lot of players, right? In the afternoon, 
we're talking, I don't know, maybe um, 40, 50, 60 plates, not one. Not one person with a broken wrist. This is college squash. You know, reasonable, reasonable to good college squash. So I want him to buy in. Okay, so even this girl at the bottom of the ladder, no disrespect, okay? She's <laughs> playing 14 on the girls' team. She's still got a cocked wrist, because that's how you get the ball out of the corner. So he's got to be about, so guys, hooked in. So now we've got to do the program. The, the program is not fun. It's actually kind of boring, but you've got to concentrate. You've got to do the homework. I'm telling you, go and hold your racket. When mum and dad are driving you to and from, hold the racket. When you're at home, <laughs> hold the racket. Do your shadow swings. I give you a little program at home for two minutes a day. Shut up. You mean you're not going to do this? What are you buying? If the kid isn't bored in, I'm not teaching that. I'm only teaching it if he's bored in. Then we do the program. I separate the broken wrist program out from everything else. In other words, if the focus is on tactics, Jerry, you off? Gentlemen, take a bow. <laughs> Hope it's twins. <laughs> so um, uh, we separate out. So I, what I don't want to do, and I'm actually. I'm going to say something who's going to probably laugh at me because I'm very guilty of this. So we're doing a length, the focus is on length or it's on a tactical thing and he's still breaking his wrist. I can't get my head out of it. I have to force myself to say don't do this because I've got to make sure that the kid is enjoying the program, enjoying the session, getting more things out and not me just, just hammering down on this one aspect of technique. How much you come down on a kid for this because you just know the kid wants it more than it's up to you and your relationship and you, you don't need me to, to describe that. You know that. But when someone wants it so bad because you just know that they want to have a college experience or turn pro or do whatever and you know this is so important then you've got to address that. Apart from that, power kills good technique. Power kills good technique. So this swing here Soft, high, easy. So if I can do that and I speed it up to hit my hard drive, it should be the same swing done faster. But the fact is in all sport, and ours as much as any of them, when you swing faster, the technique goes down the toilet. So when you want, as I tell the kids, I want you to have a pretty swing. And then we're going to speed up the swing when we're doing our pure technical practice. I know that when we go into a tournament, okay, the sunshine is going to hit it low and hard and he's just going to look something out of I don't know what, and that's okay. That's okay, but not in the program when coach is trying to teach you to hit a nice swing because you are going to get become a better player. And that's when I personally, I always draw on my experiences and examples on the broken wrist. Any questions on the broken wrist? No? How, how do we, I, I don't know what it is, I don't understand if what? the kids have it or not. Oh yeah, you can see it. Well, I just demonstrated it there. Does everyone know, does everyone see what this is here? So it's not cocked here. But some players go back cocked and they turn and roll to break. Some players come back broken, boom, there it is. It doesn't matter when it happens. Some players do a half turn, they do this. <coughs> That's not as bad because there's still a fair amount of, this is a strong wrist position, there's still, still enough forearm rotation here. It's not great because the racket face is not open. Open, 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 rotating, less open but still open, follow through. So knuckles up. Knuckles up, but not knuckles up here, right? But as we go through, as we sweep through the hitting zone, knuckles are up, okay? So, so you, sorry, so you, you, you got, and it's so common. And all you coaches, <coughs> some of you coaches I, I know that here, you know all these kids and you, you're laughing sometimes because I know, oh, he's got the same kids as I've got. And I go, oh my God, that's bloody good. So the program, uh, grip adjustment, question mark, figure eight without the ball, shadow swing, speed tap, boom, boom, boom. And you could go to, if that was what I would go to rainbow drill. You saw me do the rainbow drill with Joyce, uh, and Lou earlier. And I like the rainbow drill, as long as everyone's got eye And I love the rainbow drill. There's no running, there's no nothing, it's easy. Right. No more questions on that? Uh, one more thing. Yeah. One more thing. So on the broken wrist, so my take on it, um, 
is that in addition to the grip change, in addition to these drills, when they start actually hitting the ball, I like them to do a little happen. So we talked about kind of how the rack is sort of up, kind of lays down, comes through, and we talked about some people calling it the two position. So what I have them do is when they actually start hitting the ball, they're hitting it soft and high, and I'm having them just come from here to here. And I tell them this is a half swing. So I say, when you watch the players, they're going to be up, maybe come over, come down. And right now, you're just doing a little half swing just for the purposes of this drill because, like Mike said, a lot of kids, they can do this as it comes down, it dips, and the, of course you can see, it's much easier to see often the racket face closing down rather than the wrist going through like this at first because it, the wrist kind of happens kind of quick. It comes down like this through, so I say we're just coming from here for the purposes of, the, of this drill. Eventually, it's going to come up maybe over a little bit. So I have a few players in my little clinic that are working on this now, and in a lot of their drills, they just come from here to here. Yeah. And when they do the shadow swings, they do it slowly and often very piecemeal. So sometimes I actually want it to look a little bit robotic, which doesn't feel great. So it comes down and then it comes through, but they're just kind of teaching that wrist to do its thing so that it can yeah. stay calm. Yeah, you're bang on. That's excellent. So having someone just maybe hit from here, but remember, you maybe should tell the kid, but we're leaving power out, out there. So it's not gonna happen. And yes, sometimes I do this one, two, throw to three. One, two, throw to three. And it is mechanical, looks artificial, manufactured, but you have to go through that until it actually feels good. Okay. Mike, I sometimes with, with this on the backhand, on both sides actually, I'll move the player right up to the front wall and we'll be aiming, uh, we'll be doing that tap drill sort of back yeah. and forth. Um, but we're both aiming for the, for the out of court line. So we're trying to hit, we're, we're, we're right up at the front wall, but we're working really to get your hand right down under the ball and keep your wrist up and you're, you're starting to wake up that forearm, you know, because you have to get your racket underneath the ball, your hands low, and you're hitting from underneath the ball, almost directly up. Yeah, and it's it's really breaking it down. It's a very very short part of the stroke. Right? <laughs> tap, yeah, tap. It's, it's that. And then but with, speed, but with, yeah. you know, for you're sure. aiming for the you play a little game. Who can hit the, top, the out of court line? Right. How close can you get to the front wall? Yeah, that's excellent. <coughs> it is the most. It's the most frustrating. It's the most difficult thing for you. And but remember, it's times ten the most difficult thing for a player to learn. Okay.